What's up guys, Taylor Mears here with All Day Training, back with another installment of the ADT Vlog Series. This week I wanted to mix it up because on June 18th, many of you know, we are hosting or helping host a lift-a-thon to raise money for the Haggerty family. It's going to be a lot of fun, but many of you out there have never done a powerlifting com uh, competition. So what I wanted to do today was show you some correct technique over one of the lifts you'll be performing that day. A very basic lift that a lot of people get wrong, and that's the bench press. And the person I brought to help me with that is my man Travis Katz. Most of you know him from my other vlogs. Most of you may not know that Travis, at 21 years old a few years ago, held the Texas bench press record at 220 pounds. I personally watched him bench press over 400 without breaking a sweat. So the guy's an expert. And we're going to hear some of his tips and tricks on how to do it correctly just bench press correctly and maximize your performance, as well as the rules that you're going to need to follow when uh, you come to the liftathon. If in fact you are participating in it as an athlete, take it away, Travis. Okay, so like you said, today we're going to go over the bench press. We're going to go over a few setup techniques, as well as rules and regulations in performing the movement. Uh, now, whenever I coach the, bit, the bench press, or if I'm, if I'm teaching a novice lifter, uh, there's a few things that we're always going to go over first. Uh, number one is going to be during the setup. So what he's going to do is Taylor's going to lie back here and we're going to get his shoulder set properly. So he's going to approach the bar with his hands. He's going to allow the bar to lift himself up a little bit and he's going to activate his scapulas. He's really going to try and pinch those shoulder blades together. That's going to give him a really, really good pressing foundation. A big problem that a lot of novice lifters have when they go into the bench press is they have a lot of lack of shoulder stability because they're really benching with a flat back. They've sort of got their their shoulders rounded forward, they've got real flat lats, their scapulas aren't put together, and their shoulder blades are sort of riding on the edge of the bench, and it provides a lot of lack of stability. Sometimes you kind of see uh, one shoulder blade riding on the edge of the bench, or maybe one arm's rising faster than the other. So we really try to put those shoulders back as far as we can get, we really press them into the bench, that's going to give us a really firm, steady, stable pressing foundation. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to approach his grip. Uh, grip is obviously different for everybody, and obviously there's multiple grips out there for you bench pressing experts who are watching the video. Uh, so today we're really just keeping it uh, basic and beginner. So there's a few things we're looking for. The key point is that we want his humerus here, his brachialis, his humerus, his part of the, uh, the arm where his tricep and bicep is. We want those to be roughly 45 degrees from the torso, especially during the descent. Now whenever you go to press, if your elbows flare out a little bit, that's fine. But during the descent, we really were looking for about 45 degrees. You might hear it as uh, shoulder rotation or tuck in the elbows. So in order to do that, we have to find a grip which allows our wrist to remain over our elbows at all times. So what Taylor's going to do is, and I mean, he's bench pressed a thousand times before, so he knows where he wants his grip. But he's going to find a grip that he thinks works best for him, and we're going to approach him to the unrack. So Taylor's going to unrack. Number two is somewhere in the rack hold position, all the way back, all the way forward. Somewhere in this window of motion, there's going to be a particular point where the bar feels the most weightless for him. With a set, stable shoulder foundation, he's going to find that bar positioning that feels best for him, where the bar feels the most weightless. That's going to be his starting and ending position for the movement. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a test run to make sure our grip looks good to make sure that we're able to get 45 degrees with the humerus and to make sure that our forearm is remaining perpendicular with the floor, wrist over the elbow. So he's going to give himself a few, uh, a few uh, test reps. Good. Good. Looks good. Let's get two more. Good. And good. Now real quick, cameraman. Let's, uh, let's come over here to the side of the bar uh, so we can take a look at the bar path. Taylor's going to get his rack back. He's going to get his shoulder set, hands repositioned. We're going to unrack. He's got his starting point. Now, this particular part where the bar is at, this is going to be different for everybody. For everybody, the bar is going to feel most weightless in a slightly different position. So for some people who may have a starting point back here, what you're going to notice is because we're always trying to lower down to the sternum, he's going to lower down to the sternum. So the bar path is going to come forward down to the sternum. As he presses away, the bar is going to travel back. You may see a slight curve in their bar path, that's fine. If they're a person who has a naturally position right here, 
He's going to lower down to the sternum. You're going to notice that his bar path is a lot more straight. What you have to understand as a coach is that everyone's bar path is a little different. You don't need to approach the bench press thinking that everyone's bar path needs to have curve or everyone's bar path needs to move in a straight line. What they need to do is find their starting position, start and end. We're going to lower to the sternum. We're going to try to see to it that the elbows are under the wrists, the forearms are perpendicular to the floor, and he's going to press. Good. Now you'll see that Taylor here has a pretty straight up and down bar path. Good. So just to reiterate, we've got activated scapulas, we've got a good pressing foundation. We have found our grip positioning. For our grip positioning, we want humerus 45 degrees from the torso. We want wrist to remain over the elbow. And we want our forearm to remain perpendicular to the floor. He's going to give us two or three more reps. Good, go ahead and wrap it. Go ahead and sit up. Now, the next big thing that we want to teach is that a lot of the times uh, you may hear, whether it's, it's another resource or another uh, source of information, maybe you follow people on social media, you, a term you hear a lot is that you really bench with the legs. Um, leg drive is a huge part of the movement, and a lot of people have a hard time comprehending what exactly that means. So what we're going to do is Taylor's going to get back, he's going to get his position, what we're going to do is we're going to find a really good foot positioning for him. So he's going to try and get his feet flat on the ground. Okay? Whenever we say bench with the legs, what we mean is when you lower that bar down to your bench press, that chain of energy starts the feet. You are pressing your feet into the floor. You're activating your quads. You're squeezing your glutes. You're trying to drive your feet through the floor. And by doing that, you're driving your shoulder blades into the bench. It's going to help you get a lot more leverage under the bar. So he's going to come down, he's going to lower to the chest, and by squeezing his glutes, he's going to press his feet into the floor, he's going to drive the bar. Good, let's come down, let's do a, a, a full speed rep, press with the feet, drive those shoulders into the bar. You'll see he's got a flexed heel, his calves are tight, his quads are activated, his glutes are squeezing. That kinetic chain of energy starts the feet. You drive your shoulder blades into the bench with your legs, and that's going to help you get a lot of leverage under the bar. That's what we call leg drive, all right? You've got to bench with the legs. A lot of people go into the bench press. Sure, they might have their shoulder set. Sure, they might have good grip. Sure, maybe they're activating their core like they should, but their legs are loose as noodles, all right? If you aren't activating your legs, if you aren't putting some leg drive into your press, you're always going to be coming up short of your potential. So leg drive is huge. So in order to get good leg drive, all I'm going to say is play with it. You gotta find a foot positioning that works for you. Some people like to have their feet more wide. Some people like to have their feet tucked way up under them, underneath their glutes. Play with it, find a foot positioning where you can really feel yourself getting your legs involved in the movement and just stick at it. Um, over the course of a lot of reps, months, years, you may tweak it here and there, you might find something that, you might find something that works a little bit better for you. But foot positioning is a big thing. You gotta find that position where you can really find your legs being recruited and you can really find yourself getting some extra leverage under the bar. Now, go ahead and set up. So as Taylor mentioned, uh, we have the lift-a-thon coming up June 18th. Uh, the bench press will definitely be one of the movements. We're going to have the squat, the bench, and the deadlift. It is going to be a full powerlifting meet. And for some of the novice lifters who want to come out, I mean, keep in mind, it's just a backyard meet. Um, it's just for fun, old school. We're not going to take it very serious. Uh, but there will be one head judge. He is going to call everybody around the board. Uh, pretty consistent, so we're going to have some rules that we're going to kind of go over for you. Now, the first rule is going to be whenever you're, you're called to come perform your lift, you've got 60 seconds to get under the bar, to unrack it, to perform your movement, and to rack the bar. So, Taylor Mayers is up. He's going to be told to unrack, and he will hold until he's told to bench. Whenever he's told to bench, he will lower the bar down to his chest. As soon as the judge sees that the bar has come to a complete stop, he will be given a command to lift. Lift. Good. So let's go through the full thing again. He gets called. He's under the bar. He's told to unrack. Lift. Go. Press. Rack. Good. Do not rack the bar until told to rack. So what we're looking for 
is that bar's got to come to a full pause. Okay, there's no one second, two second, three second pause. It's whenever the judge thinks the bar has come to a complete stop, he will tell you to lift. That's rule number one. You got to come to a complete stop. Rule number two is that the hips, the glutes, the butt has to remain in contact with the bench. The butt cannot come up. A lot of the times when you see people who are really good at recruiting their legs into the movement and they get a lot of good leg drive, it forces their hips to come up off the bench. You got to keep your butt in contact. Unrack. He's going to perform it right. Down. Lift. Rack. Now we're going to show you a no lift with the hips coming up. So let's try to get your glutes up off the bench. Unrack. Down. Lift. Rack. That will be a no lift. Leg drive forced the hips to come up off the bench. It's no good. Rule number three with the bench press is that the feet are allowed to move. A lot of times people will begin to press due to their leg drive. You'll see their feet sliding forward or maybe they're, they've got lack of ankle flexibility and their toes begin to twist out. Your feet are allowed to move, but they cannot come off contact with the floor. They have to remain in contact with the floor at all times. So we're going to show you a no lift where he picks his feet up off the ground. Unwrap. Down. Lift. Wrap. A lot of times, sometimes you'll see people getting kind of squirmy. They're doing everything they, everything they can to get the bar up. You pick your feet up. Feet leave contact with the floor. It's going to be a red light. Go ahead and sit up. Good. So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. Uh, we went over some setup. We went over some rules. Real quick little pro tip for you. The hips coming up off the bench when your glutes leave the bench, that's a big problem in this movement, not just in piloting meets, but around the board in general when you see a lot of people try to go heavy in the gym. The primary cause for that reason is because your knees are either level with your hips or they're above your hips. Okay, so let's go ahead and sit up real quick. Please sit down for a second. One thing to fix your hips from rising up on you is to try and get your knees lower than your hips. And just to go into an explanation, that's why you see a lot of people tuck their feet up under their glutes. So up here, I'm going to be in a position where I may do this, okay, due to pushing with leg drive. So one way to fix it is I'm going to tuck my feet behind me, and this is a little dramatic, but now my feet are behind me. You can see my knees are lower than my hips. Now when I go to press with my feet, I physically can't get my glutes off the bench. So that just goes into adjusting your foot positioning. If your foot positioning is it's giving you good leg drive, but it's causing you to miss your lift, play with the foot positioning a little bit. Find a position where you can prevent your hips from coming up off the bench. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I hope you got all that information. There was a lot of information to go over, but you know what? You follow all those tips, you become a world-class venture in no time. Don't forget, June 18th is the lift of thong We're raising a lot of money for the Haggerty family. It's going to be a ton of fun. We're going to have barbecue out there, a ton of vendors, a lot of great people, other gyms. Um, June 18th. Go to the Facebook page. Check it out. Throw some love on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot, guys.